Uh, Rick, of course, is not a stranger to anyone. He's a local radio personality, salesperson for KXKZ, among other things. And uh, what we're talking about tonight, though, is Ruston Community Theater. And uh, Rick is currently the president of the Ruston Community Theater. Well, Rick, welcome to uh, Community Focus. Thank you, John. And uh, before we get too involved, why don't you go ahead and tell us what radar weather shows right now? Oh, radar weather showing um, some storms moving in. They're in Bienville Parish. They'll be overhead probably in the next uh, 12 minutes and 33 seconds. So, so we're approaching right. Yeah, we're going to get some severe showers okay. here throughout the night. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, uh, Russ Computer Theater, of course, has been around for what, 11 years now? Uh, 12. 12 yeah, years. 12 years, and we celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. We're kind of loose in the theater there, you know. <laughs> I mean, we, we just Point did that. Me. You know, our organization takes a lot of effort, mm -hmm. and we finally got it organized to have That's our 10th anniversary. Yeah. Now, uh, there is a show going on, or the uh, rehearsals for our show is going on right now. Right, we're going to do a line in winter, and that's going to open on the uh, 17th, I believe. It'll be whatever two weeks from tonight is. Mm -hmm. That would be the 17th. It would be the 17th, okay. right. Um, and that'll be our second show of this season, and we're going to do one other show. We're, we're coordinated with the Peach Festival. It's going to be a trip to Bountiful. So we're going to uh, have, wind up our season. We usually do three shows in a season. Now, this will be the first time RCT's done a show at Peach Festival. Right, right. We've uh, thought about doing that for a while. It just so happens that it's working out that way. This season has been pushed back a little bit, so we're going to tie it in with the big Peach Festival event on the weekend mm -hmm. when everybody's in town and hopefully get some tourist dollars. That's true. Uh, you know, RCT, of course, we're saying has been around 12 years, but uh, it's interesting. We find people every day who don't know about it. Right. Right, and uh, a lot of newcomers coming to the area don't know about it, and one of the uh, reasons I would say for that is we don't have a permanent home. Mm -hmm. um, we've been using the facilities at Louisiana Tech. I believe we've done something here at Trinity in the past. Right, Trinity has had some shows um, here. Ruston yeah. High School we've used in the past, and I know other spots, even the Civic Center. So we don't have a, a foundation, and people, you know, trying to find out about the organization, it's fragmented at best. Mm -hmm. uh, to the radio, you listen, and to the... Oh, that's right. I, I forgot. You're the only... But um, we're, we're trying to get an identity and, and get more visible. Towards uh, having a permanent home? Yeah, we have probably uh, since inception uh, 12 years ago, but uh, with fundraising and, and trying to find a site that was suitable for our efforts mm -hmm. through the years uh, has limited our search, but... Um, we're getting a little bit more aggressive than we have in the mm -hmm. past finding a home. And, and of course, RCT is made up of volunteers who serve on the board and as officers and uh, put together the st sets. And well, the whole thing is volunteer. Strictly volunteer, from actor to uh, board members, um, st stage hand, backstage, uh, you name it, um, all volunteers. So nobody gets refused. And that's including <laughs> actors. <laughs> that's right. I mean, it's a great opportunity to get out there and get on stage and uh, just do it. Well, you've, in fact, been in some shows. Yeah, I have, matter of fact. Uh, I did it, and uh, I just decided to try to do it and got cast one day, and uh, my ego's been assuaged ever since. <laughs> <laughs> of course, with, with, you, with you, that's not saying a whole lot. No, it isn't. No, no, because, you know, a feather would take care of that. But, um, of course, you know, talking about, talking about Rick Godley, uh, when you came in tonight, one of the camera guys said, well, obviously you're not from around here, and you're not from around here. How did you get here? Well, the classic answer I give, and I'll share it with you, if uh, you spell Rustin backwards, it spells not sure. So, uh, you know, all roads lead to and from. Uh, no, I came here from, I was born in New York. My mother made sure I was uh, a New York, uh, native New Yorker, but I grew up in New Jersey uh, for 25 years. Then I moved to New Orleans for a year and a half, and then I moved to Ruston. Geographically, this was ideal. I was traveling on the road at the time, selling women's apparel, and Ruston is geographically centered between Dallas, New Orleans, Jackson, Little Rock. So I chose here. And you've and been here ever since. <laughs> Uh, yeah, have ever and since 1981, and, 82. And have married now, have a family, the whole bit. Married and family, and um, have no desire to leave. Now, that doesn't mean there's no ambition here. But, uh, <laughs> well, you can be a Russian and still have ambition. That's true, that's true, and uh, we're doing that here and enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Now, how, what, what got you involved with RCT? Um, well, I moved back, I moved away from Ruston for three months, and I moved to Dallas. And I got disillusioned with the big city, so I came back 
and was sitting around on the front porch and I saw an audition at a local uh, business and decided to try out for a play because I've always wanted to do it. You always watch plays, you always admire the actors and actresses and wonder if you can do it. So I tried it and I just happened to get cast as Stanley Kowalski in Streetcar Named Desire. Very and fitting. <laughs> I wore a leather jacket to the audition, you know, I think that's what did it. I, I had nothing to do you with You had talent. the costume, so it worked. Right, right. I, I, I didn't shave because I was unemployed at the time, and uh, so I, it just kind of looked like a, a Marlon Brando type, I guess, I don't know. But uh, I got that, enjoyed it thoroughly, a great experience, and I was approached by Ed Donaldson to serve uh, on the board of directors. Mm -hmm. They were looking for people, and I said, sure. And that was three years ago. and have passed through the ranks ever That's since. Uh, where do the plays that RCT chooses? How, how does RCT choose their plays? We got a uh, play reading committee, and once again, that's volunteers, and we welcome anybody and everybody um, make suggestions. We are a community theater. We are this community's theater. Uh, but this community, uh, this committee selects plays. We do three a year, and when we get ambitious, we try a musical. Mm -hmm. As we did this year. Yes, very ambitious. It, uh, do you think uh, next year there'll be a musical also in store? Uh, let me see. I had to look at my crystal ball. No, I, I don't see one happening for next year. Um, not, not, not this soon. I think we've done three musicals throughout the 12 years, if I recall. Not that I've been involved for 12 years, but uh, the last one, Oliver, before a funny thing happened mm -hmm. on the way to the forum, and I don't recall the other one. I have a list. Um, but anyway, the uh, play selection committee chooses three plays they feel suitable for uh, casting. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's first and foremost. Uh, we do have a lot of trouble getting men. Uh, so anytime, anytime a play is selected, you know, we got to be real mindful, I guess, of the cast and what mm -hmm. type of people it does take. That's right. That's right. Trying to, um, but we need to increase our casting pool and our actor base and mm -hmm. actress base. Once again, the invitation goes out to everybody watching Come on and, and you, try. Know, you, you say that, and people sit there and say, "Well, you know, that's 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 nice for him to say, but I don't I don't feel like doing that." But we do uh, see people from time to time participate in a play, act in a play, and they have never done anything. That's right, and uh, that seems to be from talking around the state. There are other um, community theaters. There's an excellent one down in Abbeville, and there's a man, uh, 40 years old, uh, who tried out for the first time and is just finding great things about himself, that he, he can conquer his fear, mm -hmm. fear of speech, uh, public speaking, and he's getting immediate rewards as far as the applause and uh, working with a group. So there's so some very gratifying. Oh yeah, very therapeutic value to, uh, to doing it. Somebody might ask, well, how long does it take? Uh, what, what, you know, you've been in place, what is the normal uh, uh, time involved from rehearsals to the point of uh, putting it on stage? Well, community theater, um, I would say six weeks from the time the original casting call goes out mm -hmm. uh, to the curtain opening night. Six weeks is safe uh, because we are going on volunteers and amateurs, mm -hmm. if you will. And unlike Louisiana Tech, which by the way has an excellent, excellent program, theater program, they can put a play together in four weeks where we take about six. But it takes commitment, tremendous amount of commitment. Mm -hmm. Toward the end, um, you have to have, if you're married, a, a, an understanding spouse Sorry. because you are away from home. Uh, for all hours uh, of the day, and pardon me, of the night, and toward the end, like, well, you know, it's going to be a solid week before the show. Mm -hmm. So six weeks is a, a safe mm -hmm. guesstimate or a, a good, comfortable time for us to get ready for a play. Yeah. Why don't we take a short break now, when we come back, we'll uh, tell the viewers about uh, the annual um, membership meeting that's coming up next week, and uh, also uh, uh, tell them how three members who have served so many years with the board are going to be honored at that time. Catch the spirit. Oh, over the line. Watch your dinner, Miss Payne. Open up your heart and give someone your hand. Hey, look at that, Mr. Reed. The spirit's alive in everything we do. Reach out your hand. And catch the spirit too. Welcome back to Community Focus, and of course, uh, you're familiar now with Rick Godley. And uh, if it's not raining by now, check out Radar Weather. Right on um, 107.5. All right. 
Anyway, we're talking about uh, the being in a play and things of that nature. So uh, what, I guess what you want to emphasize to people is it's not that big of a time constraint. No. You know, you, you do have the rehearsals, and it is something you get involved in, but uh, for the average working person, it is something that we can do. Right. And dare I say the rewards are indelible. I mean, it's just you create a memory. That's what happens. It goes from, I think I'm going to try. I'm not sure I can, but you do it. And then you go out live on stage, and you're literally on the edge. You know, will I, will I come through? Will a group come through? And you do. You get the applause turns into a memory and it turns into a great experience. And of course there's uh, places of service to warm up to the acting, I guess you'd say, like uh, working on scenery, uh, props, you know, there's, there's many other places that somebody can help and work and get comfortable around the theater and then perhaps become an actor on stage later on. Well that's it. Um, folks who help out uh, with sound, with lights, and as you say, props, they're backstage, they're, they're watching, like the theater takes place, you know, you try and create the illusion for the audience. You try and if you're really good, you capture them and they forget about, quote, real life, you know, mm -hmm. what's going on at home or the future of the past and they just get into that play. Well, if you're backstage, you can see the dividing line, you can see behind the stage and you can see what's going out in front. Mm -hmm. And they get to see this little magic act. And then that, get, that teases them even more, like they see the actors and actresses having fun so they in, they in turn like think, well, maybe I'm going to try it. And if he can do it, you know, maybe yeah. I can do it or she can do it. I can do and it. And RCT has seen that happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, many times. And uh, with, with great talent coming out, too. I mean, it's, it's all hidden there. And Take all. your own. Ah, thank you, John. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you worked into it. And it uh, proved to be interesting. It has been very interesting. And, uh, you know, the damages are beyond repair now. Mm -hmm. So everybody's got to tolerate me from here on out. Of course, and, and uh, things like this don't happen without uh, money. Right. And uh, the funds that support RCT uh, come in on an annual basis. You might just mention to the audience how that takes place and why the, why the fundraising drive is so very important every year. That's true. It's very admirable also from the community. I know everybody gets hit, hit up for money for various and social uh, functions, civic, um, charity, and whatnot. Uh, through the years, 12 years, there's been just tremendous support from the community. Uh, for community theater. They, they do contribute freely each year for a membership drive and so therefore there is a desire to have community theater and we have really challenged our membership to stick with us by not having a building. You know, we're going to put on the play at this church this time, tech this time, and they, they support us. They come and show. So once a year we do have a membership and it's in various grades and with the membership, you get season tickets and the community. And uh, and you have seen growth in numbers of people as well as numbers of dollars. That's right. That's right. And uh, this year, I believe, was our most successful membership drive. And I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Dr. John Like. Mm -hmm. He was the chairman of this year's membership drive. And he, he went after it and, and did it and raised, raised money for us to, uh, because we don't make money on the play. That's right. <laughs> I guarantee you. Um, we would like to see more bodies in the audience. Uh, only for the sake of uh, sharing the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, there's, there's money to be made at the door. We never make money at the door. And it is so entertaining. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's very entertaining. It's not Broadway, but it's the best we got. Well, and, and two, I, I think we ought to uh, remind ourselves to take our children and our older children, uh, whoever, to the show, because uh, there's no comparison of a live stage performance to something on TV or at the movies. That's true. Um, and I recall my mother, she... She drug me to uh, 42nd Street to see Hello, Dolly when I was a kid and The Sound of Music, and I'm like, what am I doing? And, and the, the, the children are the ones that really get enraptured and get into it. They don't realize that they're really, I mean, they know they're human beings out there, but they don't realize how close to the edge and mm -hmm. like a slip of the tongue or a prop here gone or a line lost, you know, they, they're just into it. And uh, yeah, this is an excellent opportunity for the family to get together. And, and of course, uh, many communities our size don't have such things. Right. Right, and once again, call it blessed, uh, fortunate, we have it here in Ruston, another good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, coming up next week, of course, on the 10th, I believe, Thursday night, mm -hmm. is the annual um, membership meeting, is that the right name? Right, membership meeting. Um, and that's uh, an open meeting of all the membership of Ruston Community Theater. Right, this is the time when the folks that do contribute so generously can get to... Uh, come to a meeting. All board meetings are open, by the mm -hmm. way, so, and we're always open for input <clears throat> suggestions. But this is the time the membership is encouraged to attend to um, 
tell us, listen, you're doing a good job, or I would like to see you do something differently. Um, just come and um, it's your chance to vote, so to speak, because new board members are coming on. It's a three-year term, mm -hmm. and uh, they do vote on the board members, and the election of officers, well, that's going to be by the, uh, the board itself. But this uh, May 10th, we're going to honor two people that have contributed so much time and energy and effort to the theater on the stage and behind the scenes, and one is Gene Like, mm -hmm. and another one is Sidney Landman. Mm -hmm. Both are moving from our area, and we're going to lose them. Uh, to other places and we are going to pay tribute to them and we encourage everybody to come out mm -hmm. because those two were the movers and the shakers that got the theater going in the early stages the glue that held it together and uh, you know left it in the state it is well, today. Well they've left the foundation for the theater that uh, those coming in now uh, have something very good to work with. Right, right and we are attracting more people um, dare I say younger in age but uh, that, yeah, there, there's something for them to grab onto in the form of the, the, the nucleus of the theater, mm -hmm. and it's functioning, and it's operating. Yeah. And, and, of course, what you say about uh, the, uh, the board meetings being open, the membership meeting being open, uh, you do solicit input from the community. If the community is looking for uh, shows the theater's not doing, make you aware of that. If the, you know, if, if the direction should be something different, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the theater itself is very open to any input that is out there. Right. There's a lot of impetus that right now to move toward like a, uh, a dinner theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we touched on it on our 10th, uh, 10th anniversary birthday party, if you will. Uh, there was a meal provided and it was scenes and songs from the theater over the 10 years. And there was a huge turnout. Everybody just had a great time. Good food, good entertainment. Um, so dinner theater, children's theater is something else we've been uh, asked mm -hmm. to do. Uh, we would love to do it, but once again, we infringe on another person's or another place's uh, space. That's true. Louisiana Tech, here, Ruston High. This would all become a whole lot easier if we can get our own mm -hmm. own building and our own space. And that well, hopefully, in the very near future, things can start shaping up for that. Yeah, we came pretty close. That's this. So it's, it's the thinking's there, the motivation's there, it's just a matter of the right timing now. That's right. And, uh, That's true. Well, Rick, we appreciate you being with us tonight and uh, uh, open our eyes to Russell Community Theater. Like I say, many times we overlook these things, and uh, the more we talk about them, the better off we are because we do remind, remind ourselves of what we do have around us. And uh, like you, for instance, coming in from another place in the country and choosing to live here, uh, that's very encouraging because those of us who grew up here sometimes take it all for granted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, seeing things through your eyes does make a difference. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we certainly also want to continue to wish you well in your uh, career path with KSKZ. Uh, we hear you often, we see you often out there uh, as part of the advertising for us too. So continue good work. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. And to our viewers, we hope you've enjoyed. Uh, finding out about the Starving Artist show that's coming up on the 12th, and also uh, finding out more about Rust Community Theater. And next week, we'll hope you join us again when Becky Rich will be coming with us. Uh, Becky will be coming back to tell us more about the Youth at Risk program. Until then, have a good week.